بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Do I begin? Let me begin first by thanking Muhammad, Muhammad and the team at Tumuh for inviting me to 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 speak at this event. When I was first asked to speak at this event, and I realized that it's an inspirational speech that I need to give, it made me nervous. It made me wonder what what should I inspire people? What have I done to inspire people? It also made me think about maybe I need to move into some uncharted territory in speaking about things that maybe I'm not comfortable with, so haven't been used to speaking. I usually speak about electricity poles and, and electricity transformers and renewable energy, and that's my forte, so I have no problems. But then I looked back at the previous uh, Tumor Summit. I looked at uh, talks by Nida, uh, by uh, Shahad, by uh, Abdul Aziz, Faris, and I drew inspiration from there. So uh, please bear with me. It may be unscripted because I, uh, it's something that I've not talked about. And it's, I'm going to be also sharing information I haven't shared with before. So like you heard, my wife's back there. She's, uh, she's probably going to be hearing some things for the first time. And although the temptation was there to do a dry run for her, uh, she pushed me hard last night too. And I said, no, you're going to hear it first like everybody else. So uh, please bear with me. And uh, <clears throat> let me begin by going back to the title. Lessons learned and the way forward. Uh, it's basically me taking a step back and me ta taking a step back and uh, drawing from lessons that I've learned during, I would say, uh, my career so far. Uh, so let me start off in 2002, when I first graduated from university with my undergraduate degree. And I used to be an ex-national uh, swimmer, so competitiveness was in my blood. I wanted to be the best, I wanted to be the fastest, I wanted to, uh, and that, that carried over into my, to my career. And, uh, uh, I wanted to get the best job, I wanted to drive the best car, I wanted to get the best uh, uh, postgraduate degree, and that thankfully worked for me. So since 2002, I was caught up in this uh, environment of, of achievement that all of us get caught up into, and thinking uh, that I, I was in complete control of what I was doing, and the more effort I put in, the more I would see the returns. And that worked, that worked, and uh, it took me forward, relatively speaking. Alhamdulillah, I was doing better than the people around me. I was excelling at work. I was excelling at, at uh, my extracurricular activities. But then something happened in 2010, something that brought me back to the ground, something that made me realize that don't, think, don't take things for granted. And there are things happening around you that you may want to think about and give more attention to, which would probably assist you in growing. <clears throat> Some of you may have noticed, and you'll notice even more, as this uh, talk goes around, uh, along, that I walk with a limp. I have a slight limp. Uh, some of you may have not noticed, but I've got a large scar at the back of my head too. And that's where I draw my lessons learned from. So let me take you through that journey of what, what about that. Now this limp is not is something that I was born with. It's not something that um, uh, uh, is a sporting uh, accident, as I've mentioned to a lot of people. <clears throat> it's something that happened and which I carry forward, and I'm proud to carry forward as we go along, along with the scar at the back of my head, that works as a constant reminder of uh, the need to take a step back and remain grounded, no matter what achievements you, you think you're, you've been achieving as you go on in life. So uh, what happened? Uh, 2010, uh, I, was, uh, I was plowing along uh, uh, through my career, and then this happened. To the medics out there, they could see straight away what was, what's the problem over there. Uh, that's an MRI of uh, my brain, the spinal cord. Uh, to the medics out there, that shouldn't be there. That, folks, is a schwannoma to the medics out there. To the non-medics out there, that's a tumor. And to me, that's a game changer. So that's what happened. I was losing sensation in the right side of my body gradually and this tumor was growing. It was pressing my spinal cord, and it was, uh, it was uh, causing me more and more pain, and I didn't realize it until I was diagnosed. Now, the period from when I was diagnosed to the period when I was operated on was the period where I tend to look back and tend to reassess uh, what is it I want from life, and what is it that's happening around me, and how much of control do I think I have over life. Uh, I uh, looked at it, and the uh, worst case scenario was uh, that tumor, they will extract it. It will turn out to be a malignant tumor. 
while extracting it, it could damage my spinal cord and I could be paralyzed. Best case scenario, alhamdulillah, uh, they extracted it. Uh, it was a benign tumor and there was not much damage to the spinal cord. So alhamdulillah, it worked out well. And I remember when I was being uh, uh, wheeled out of the operating room after a 12 hour surgery, my mom was telling me that you had a smile on your face. Why? And I said I was smiling because uh, the first thing I remember doing when I was, as I was coming out of uh, being sedated was moving my toes. And as soon as I moved my toes and I felt the bed sheet of my toes, I realized I wasn't paralyzed. So I realized that I could feel that. So that's a bad thing right there, regardless of, uh, of uh, what would happen next. So then I, I reassessed what do I want from life? What, what, what is it that I'm uh, looking for? And... Uh, how do I need to rebalance things? Because I needed a rebalance. So I quietened down a bit. I refocused. I uh, let go of a lot of things that I was doing. Uh, I got married. had beautiful uh, two kids, Faris and Jude. And uh, we reassessed everything. And I thought that by reassessing and, and taking a step back, that would stunt my growth so, uh, by some means. But that wasn't true. That, it further excelled it. By, by adopting this refocused approach. And when it further extended that in 2014, I was appointed one of the youngest government appointees uh, as a regulator uh, of a sector in excess of assets in excess of $15 billion at the age of 33. So I was tasked with this, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, position to regulate a massive sector. And again, the temptation came in of being caught up with this environment of invincibility, importance that comes up with this job. So how do I remain grounded while trying to match uh, being serious? Uh, let, me take you, let me take you to the lessons learned and let me take you to a typical day in, in October of last year. So the day started off with me making the front page of the newspaper talking about subsidies and the removal of subsidies. Uh, the government had taken this tough decision and I was put as the face to implement it. So that's me on the first uh, front page of the local newspaper making, uh, making that statement and uh, taking the heat for it. I also made it to the second page of the Indian newspaper. I don't know what it says over there, but typically putting my picture, putting electricity poles and, and, and wires sums up the story. So that's an achievement too. So as this is happening in the morning, being inundated with uh, reporters and news, uh, newscasters and the angry public and going through all of these these mixed emotions, I go back home. I go back home, and then this happens. That's me and Jude. Jude can care less about who her Baba is, or what day he's having. All she cares about is, let's get out that face paint, and let's be clowns. So she can care less about who you are. So it's striking this balance, where sometimes we tend to get too caught up in what we're doing, and too caught up in... Uh, in, in achieving something that we tend to lose sight of the people around us. And it's this lesson that I've learned that I go back home, I leave uh, the office on time every day. I don't stay a single minute. I don't take work back home, and I dedicate time to the family too. So as I went home, we reacted like clowns. We put on makeup, uh, and we put on uh, face paint, put her to bed, and then I had to remove that, put on some other makeup, put on my masar and make the 10 o'clock news. So I had to switch back and forth in one day, talking about something, going back home, and then doing that. So it's those lessons that I've learned that we tend to sometimes be caught up in these, in these emotions uh, and, and, and this aura of invincibility that's created around us where we realize that it doesn't matter to the people, some people, it just absolutely doesn't matter. You need to focus on that too and, and give them the time they need because you're not going to get a chance to do that it's going to pass you without you realizing it. So that's a word of advice that I carry forward uh, with, with people. And uh, I tend to have taken up mentoring, and I love mentoring. I wish I could uh, dedicate more time to mentoring and speaking to my mentors. And I take them through a number of lessons and pass this information. So this is now about taking things forward. The first thing I take with, uh, with, with uh, people that I mentor, the first question I ask them is, are you learning? You need to constantly question yourself. Are you learning? Every quarter, every now and then, question yourself. Are you learning? But not only are you learning, are you having fun? 
And th this, folks, has to go hand in hand. You can, you, can be bo you can be learning and not having fun, and sooner or later you're going to get frustrated, you're going you're to get uh, tired, and then you stop learning. Or you can be having fun, as most of us want to do, and not be learning anything, but that's a different issue. But these two things have to go hand in hand, because by you learning and having fun, you're going to be excelling without you realizing it. But you need to question yourself. And as soon as you realize that you're not learning and you're not having fun, address those issues. Address why that's not happening. The second thing I tell people is work on the skills that you hate the most, the painful skills. I would admit, to me, that's my worst nightmare, an Arabic keyboard. I absolutely hate typing in Arabic. I just can't type in Arabic. Now, I can push that off and give it to someone to type my letters, but I sit there and plow through typing in Arabic. And I worked on that, and I'm proud to say that's no longer a nightmare. On the contrary, I enjoy typing in Arabic now. But work on the skills that you hate the most, because it's those skills that could probably come and haunt you later on. Never leave a skill uh, that you feel like it's not worth, it, worth working on. Work on them, and then move to the next skill you hate the most. Last but not least, communicate. The importance of communication. I don't mean to be re repetitive, but it's very important. Communicate with your superiors, commu communicate with your co uh, subordinates, communicate with your, um, with your colleagues, but don't feel like things are not worth communicating. How painful it is, communicate with people around you, and you will get to a better place than you were if you had not communicated. My final takeaway, and I hope, I hope I've kept people engaged and inspired, my final takeaway is, 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 is a quote said by Russell Stimmons. He said, surround yourself with smarter people than you. So don't feel like you're always smart. Surround yourself with smarter people than you. Uh, and feed off them, because you guys feed off each other. Don't feel, don't feel threatened. No, on the contrary, they would help you as much as you would help them. But I'd like to add to that too, and that's the Qais al-Zakwani quote, and keep them motivated. Because just the mere fact of surrounding yourself with smarter people and not motivating them, not empowering them, not getting them involved, would get them frustrated. So it helps to surround yourself with smarter people than you, and provided you keep them motivated, they will take you far. So I always say that you, only, you will only go as far as your team wants to take you, and you're not going to be able to go alone. So provided they're smart people, provided they're motivated, you're going to benefit most from it. Thank you very much.